Hi, I'm Warwick Isaacs from Canterbury Earthquake Recovery Authority. There's been a lot of focus on uh, the, the CBD red zone in recent times and in the new year we're going to be moving into the residential red zone and we just want to do some uh, video footage about what you'll expect and how, how things will change in the residential red zone just to make it a little easier for you as, as you move out and move on with your lives into new properties. So far approximately 3,000 families have, have made the decision about exercising option one or two and, and approximately half of those have, have actually settled with the Crown now. Um, so that's a good positive thing that, that even in this bad circumstances people are making decisions in order to uh, enable them to get on with their lives and move forward. So it's great that though, that, that number of people have made their decisions already. But, but don't feel rushed to make your decision if you haven't made it uh, by now. You do have until early 2013 to make the decision about exercising option one or two. Um, so do take your time and again, feel free to, to talk about it with your friends and your family and of course get that legal advice which is important to, to formalise your ultimate decision. Work will start in early 2012 to, to begin the property clearance in, in Dallington, Bexley and Kaiapoi. And we'll work with the insurers uh, to get the, that work underway. So it'll be a mixture of SERA work and, and insurer work. And we expect the program of clearance will take uh, in the order of two years. So I'm just going to chat now with Brian from Cancern just about some of the issues that uh, residents in the red zone, residential areas will face as we move into property clearances in early 2012. Thanks Warwick. Uh, I guess one of, the, one of the important things that uh, residents want to know is how is Sierra going to communicate its schedule for, for its works over the next few months? Sure Brian. So what, what we've got is we've got a website uh, so which will draw people's attention to. There'll be a lot of information there about what we're doing and, and timing of when we're doing things. Also we'll run a radio campaign on, on a number of radio stations to alert people to activity happening in their area. And we plan to have some community meetings as well where, where folk can come along and hear from us, but more importantly, we can hear from them and answer their, their questions about what, what we're doing. One of the big questions that residents have been asking us is when will their house be pulled down so they can maybe come and have a look at it? Yeah, yeah Brian, I can understand that the folk wanting to see their houses being demolished and I can also understand there'll be some that won't. From our point of view, it'll be quite difficult to advise people about their properties, we're going to do them in large numbers, we're not actually going to know exactly when a particular house of a particular former owner is going to be demolished or, um, or if it's going to be removed or relocated or in fact just pulled apart and, uh, and recycled entirely so we, we aren't going to be able to provide that opportunity unfortunately. I guess another important consideration is the houses that are around a house that may be demolished or an area. So mm. what about the residents who are li still living in, in these areas? So our plan is to identify those people and then to deliver to them uh, an information pack of, of not the houses specifically coming down, what's going to happen in the area and, and the effects they're likely to experience as a result of, of the removal of properties. Another thing, residents have been learning lots of new vocabulary with the earthquake mm. uh, and a new one we've learned is property clearances instead of just saying we're going to demo the house. Sure. Is there, what's the reasoning behind that? So in essence there's three options, Brian, there's uh, one which is full demolition quality so houses are badly damaged and, and there's no option other than to demolish them. Uh, another one is relocation of properties, we've got some folk who are um, either themselves keen on relocating their own house or in fact um, the Crown will sell them to a, a relocation company for relocation in another part of Canterbury. Uh, and another one is where, where the house is not to be relocated or demolished but can be deconstructed and, and salvaged as much as possible so recycle the materials out of, out of the property. So that's why we talk about clearance rather than strictly demolition because we'll be a mix of all those three. So what's it going to be like, I mean, with all of these trucks coming in and pulling down the houses. Can you give us a bit of an idea about that? So, so residents that are um, around the houses are you know, being um, demolished or, or relocated or salvaged. That There'll certainly be increased activity of trucks, machinery, um, might be a bit of ground vibration for the machinery you're operating. Uh, heavy excavators do, do vibrate a bit. Um, so there will be those sorts of issues. It could be a bit of a dust depending on the day um, and obviously a bit of noise. So I think um, 
it's not going to be a horrendous thing, but it's certainly something which will impact on the residents that are still living in, in the areas that houses are being um, removed from. So, I mean, the residents will need to prepare for that? Yes, yeah, so I think it's, it's and that's, that's part of what we talked about before about information packs coming out. There'll be a bit more information in those packs about how to prepare for that, what, what do you do, uh, and, and how do you best deal with getting through, through what will be a trying time for sure. Mm. What about the individual homeowners themselves? I mean, they are going to have to leave and they're going to have to deal mm. with that. Yes, I certainly understand that it's a, an emotional tie to your property, you know, whether you've raised your children there or your grandchildren have um, visited you, if your grand, grandparents. Mm. And you know, there's a long history in some of the properties that uh, people are having to move out from. So um, it, it's an emotional attachment that needs to be cut, obviously. Um, so it's just about preparing for that. Once you're gone, the property will, will, will be gone. It's just a matter of time then. And it's just about mentally getting over that step for yourself and dealing with it in the way that best suits you to be dealt with. A lot of people have actually already moved, but we still have a reasonable number st still there and they're going to have to move mm. physically and, and mentally. So, Do you have any thoughts or things for them to think about? Okay, so I think the mental issue will be the most difficult for, for folk and um, it really is a, a, a matter of getting to the point where the decision has been made and they need to move on. And um, it might be th perhaps a farewell barbecue with, with neighbours that might still be around, it might be a family gathering. It might just be a quiet a meal as a small family unit. So I think those are some options, and I'm sure there's many others, but I think people will work it out for themselves what is best for them, but um, it is just a final farewell that needs to be had. Well, I think that the other thing is that there'll be lots of information that people still want to, to know about, mm. so where do they go to get a bit more detailed information? So there's, there's two or three sources. One, one is encourage people to come along to the community meetings, which we'll have, and, and obviously we can uh, answer questions there. Uh, another one is 0800 Ring Sarah, so that's our telephone number, so it's 0800 Ring Sarah. And the other one is our website, uh, which is www.cera.govt.nz. So th those are the way that the folk can, can communicate with us and um, share any concerns or have any questions answered that they might have.